The last part uh, to be made in um, 5.2b Introduction to CAD Modeling Skills is the Automoblox wheel. So here's a picture of the Automoblox wheel, the, at least the beginnings of the Automoblox wheel. And this is where we're going to start. We're going to start using these uh, four circles and we're going to use a tool called the Offset Tool. The Offset Tool is a wonderful, amazing tool. Um, here we're just going to be making circles, and circles aren't that hard to make, but what if you drew a very complicated shape? You drew this really, really complicated shape, and then it needs a border that's also equally complicated that matches the complicated shape you just made. The Offset Tool will create that border. So it's a really, really handy tool, and we're going to use that. A lot of students get confused with these numbers here. All right, We have four different numbers here, and they represent four different dimensions. We notice this 0 .440 is a diameter, and it goes from one side to the other, and it's not the inner circle, it's the second circle from the inside. So we have the first circle on the inside is 0 .050 smaller than the 0 .440. Um, it's that much smaller. And students make mistakes. They start doing some adding subtracting of their own and they forget that it's uh, that's only a, like a radius type difference. That this is a radius here and whereas this is a diameter and they don't subtract this twice from the 0 .440 and they end up with a, a it's too big. All right. Um, but we're going to use the offset tool, so that will take advantage of this number here. We won't have to do any math. We'll take advantage of this number here, the difference between these two, and then, of course, the difference between these two here. And that'll be really, really, really handy for us. Once we've made all four of these circles, we're going to extrude them, like in this image here, and the distance is 0 0.57. Right? 0 0.57. So that's where I'm going to get my values. Uh, we're pretty much going to follow the instructions just like they are here. Um, we'll talk about this mid-plane symmetrical extrusion. That's a new thing that you're going to do that you've never done before. And we'll talk about why that's important. And then we're going to do a circular pattern, which is a very cool tool. We only have to draw one of these, and then it duplicates duplicates all the way around the circle. So we'll, I'll be demonstrating that tool also to you. Now we have to remember it's five. It'll come up uh, probably come up six when we first start it, but we want to use five. It's going to be a full 360 degrees uh, pattern. Uh, students get into trouble when they make this, and I'll talk about that in detail. We've got to make sure we have a closed loop all the way around when we make that part right there. So, all right. So let's go ahead and get going here, um, so we can produce this when we're all finished. So we'll be starting right here. Alright, so we're going to be making a new part. Click on Part. We're going to start with a 2D sketch. Some of you have noticed, click this pull-down menu and then click 2D sketch. Okay, it's fine, but you're, it's an extra step. You can just click on the icon. It's already set at 2D sketch and you can just click on that icon there. And we're going to choose the XY plane. And I like to draw in the upper right quadrant. So we're going to start with a circle, like I said. And it is a diameter of 0 0.440. All right, very nice. Now, we're going to be using the offset tool. So here's the offset tool here. And remember, this is not the smallest circle. It's the second from the smallest. So I as I hover over this with the offset tool chosen, right, offset tool right there, you'll notice in there's some instructions there that it turns red, just hovering. I'm going to left click and move inward. And I'm going to type 0 .050 and hit enter. And I get a little dimension right there, 0 .050. Sometimes, inventor on your computers when you enter 0 0.050, it will say 0 0.052. Um, it's a weird little thing, but um, if you like zoom in, zoom out, or click on it, uh, you go over here and double click on it. I 
to turn off the offset tool. We double click on it and then it'll say 0 .050 here and you hit OK but it says 0 .052 here or some other number 0 .048 it's an oddity. It happens sometimes with the computers. If you double click on it and it says the right value, it's the right value. All right. Sorry about that. Just one of those weird things that happens on some computers. So now the next offset is 0 .350. 0 .350 and enter. And lastly, we're going to go from there and we're going to go out another 0 .050 just like that inside one. And there's our four dimensions. We right click OK. We finish the sketch. So we choose Extrude. Move that little guy out the way. We don't want the inner this inner hub, this inner space yet. We want the hub and we want the rim. So I click on Hub and I click on rim. But now I'm going to change the direction because I want to see those dimensions there. So I change the direction and I am extruding this this hub from 0 0.440 diameter and then I extruded the section that goes 0 0.050 farther in and then this outer rim here. And that's great but it's an inch which make a really big fat tire and I do like big fat tires and rims but in this case we want 0.57 so I've chosen 0.57 right there and we click OK that looks excellent now we need to sketch again um, we need to sketch in between these two that, so we can extrude that and the way we're going to do that is we're going to start a new sketch we're going to click this surface here it could be the inner hub too, but I'm going to click that one. And we're going to project geometry. We're going to project the outside rim and the inside hub. And you notice we have those yellow circles there now. And that's all we need for doing another extrusion. So we'll finish sketch and we'll go back to extrude. This time we are going to extrude the center section that's pink and we've already extruded the rim and the hub but we have to do it in a separate step because it's a separate dimension it's not as big as the other dimensions and this extrusion is going to be just 0 .050 so I choose that little section there I change my dimension to 0 .050 but currently it completely sticks out right here and that's not acceptable also I need this intersection here. See that right over the hub? I don't want to step here. I need to choose that part too. So that the axle will have a smooth surface completely inside here. But like I said, I have this big fat step right here. And what it means is that the this, ed, this surface here, only its edge, its inner edge, is touching the outer edge of this. It wouldn't be a very strong connection. Uh, you'd never make a wheel like that. It would fall apart on you on the freeway at 100 miles per hour and kill you and your family and, and everybody else. So that would not be good. So we don't want those lawsuits. So we're going to choose a mid-plane extrusion. And there's two. There's symmetric here and there's asymmetric here. Well, we want symmetric. So we're going to choose symmetric. And now half of that extrusion, 0 0.0 two five is outward and the other point zero two five is inward adding up to point zero five zero that looks great and we click OK excellent now we're going to put a sketch on this surface here so start 2d sketch click that surface there and now we're ready to put the pattern on this front face that all of our wheels are going to have. And it's going to start with an arc of 0 0.250. And we could draw an arc, that would be fine uh, if I chose the two point arc. But where would I start it? You know, where's the right part, place to start my two point arc? Um, gee, we don't know the endpoints. 
much faster to use a circle. Choose circle and we want this point right here but to make sure we get it we're going to go ahead and project the geometry for that surface. Gives us that yellow line and now we choose circle. All right, So we projected the geometry we clicked this surface here and now we're back to circle again. And we want to start right there at the point where that yellow line and that black line cross. We want that to be our center. And this is going to have a radius of 0 0.250, not a diameter. So we could double it and just say 0 0.500. But I wanted to show you this handy way of switching from diameter to radius. And I just right clicked and right down here it says radius. Saying It's asking me, hey, would you like to do a radius instead of a diameter? And I'm saying, yeah, that would be a great idea. I want to do that. So I click radius and boom. Now I'm measuring in radius only, not diameter. You notice the dotted line starts at the center and just radiates outward in one direction. And the dimension is 0 0.250. Enter. Very nice and we click OK. Now is a good time to use the two-point arc because we need to complete this circle. We need the uh, arc going across here. If we don't do that, if we just trim away this circle up here, we won't have a closed loop and we won't be able to extrude. And that non-closed loop will be duplicated all the way around. So we'll take that mistake and we'll multiply it times 5. So let's just do it the right way. So we click arc and now I know where the endpoint is for the arc. It's where these two lines meet. You're not going to get a green dot there. So I'm going to show you why, what to do about that. And we're not going to get a green dot here. So we find the approximate spot, click on that, and now we're going to take this right to the center and because that is the center of our circle we do get a green dot there. So we click and we right click and we say OK. So this is good. We don't need all of this up here. We could leave it but it's better to trim it away now. It doesn't take very long. So we trim and you can see it's all as soon as I hover over it the whole thing turned dotted and that's what's going to be trimmed away and I like that, that's perfect. So I click, left click on that and we're good to go. Now I'm going to do one extra step here. It may or may not be needed. Um, for some of you it will be needed and for some of you it won't be needed. We're going to right click OK to get out of trim and I'm going to go to this black line here. Your color may vary and you notice it's turned red. I'm going to right click on it. And this is called close loop. Some of you have done this before, some of you have it. It's a very, very handy tool to make sure that our loop, whatever surface or shape we're creating, is complete. There's no voids, there's no um, points that aren't concentric or coincident, I should say. There are no non-coincident points, no gaps, and so forth. So we choose Close Loop. And it's telling us, giving us some instructions here, uh, select a curve that is connected to the start end of the open loop. Continue selecting curves until the loop is closed. Press Control and click to clear all selections. So basically what they're telling us is left click your way around that loop and that'll close it. And this is a mistake that a lot of students make is they right clicked to start the loop and then they continue to right click and it doesn't work. You can't right click, you have to left click. So I've already chosen this line here. So when I come up here I should get a white line. I'm only I'm getting a red line. So I'm going to left click on that and left click on that and boom the loop has been successfully closed. Instead of red lines you'll probably get white lines. Um, this tells me that I've successfully closed this loop. Sometimes it takes more than one try. Um, don't be discouraged. Sometimes you start one direction and then you have to start over again and go the other direction and it may take more than one effort to get it closed. This one's pretty simple. There's some other parts like when you do the connector that you really have to do the closed loop over and over and over again. 
um, to get it to work. All right, so we're good to go. We have a closed loop here. Now we just need four more of them. So we are going to duplicate this pattern by using the circular pattern. All right, so right here in the ribbon, we have a panel that says pattern. We choose circular. And the first thing it wants to know is what's the geometry that we're going to copy? Well, we're going to copy this arc and this arc here. And because they're a complete loop, now it'll duplicate that complete loop. So that's our geometry. Now it wants to know what our axis is. Basically, what's the arc or axis that we're going to revolve around? that we're going to create the circular pattern around. So I choose that so that it knows that I want to choose a circular pattern. Remember I highlighted this in yellow? Well now I can use it. See it's turning red and I've already chosen this. It's red arrow, it's highlighted, it's selected in blue and I come over here and I click. Boom. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Remember we only wanted five so we changed that six to five now we have one, two, three, four, five in our preview. It's very good. The one that we originally created is included in that five. Um, if for some reason we didn't want to go all the way around, let's say we only want to go 180 degrees, you notice that they're going from here to counterclockwise. You could flip that and go clockwise around the circle. But of course, those, neither of those are what we want to do. We want to go 360 degrees. So that's what that flip there is for. Very good. Uh, we have everything we need. We're going to click OK. And look at that. We have a nice pattern all the way around. If yours does not look like this, it's probably because um, uh, one of the reasons could be that you did not choose the dimensions correctly at the very beginning. If your arcs aren't as this close to the circle, the center hub, or they're much closer to the center hub, then you need to go back and edit those circles you did in um, that were consumed in extrusion one, right up here. All right, but you can't do it now. You have to finish the sketch to do that. We're going to finish the sketch so that we can extrude, and this is going to be a cut. We're going to cut these little pieces away to get the shape we want. So extrude, and sometimes students have trouble getting this to select all of these. So I'm going to start away from myself because they're going to extrude outward first, and I don't want to change the direction until I've chosen all of them. Um, so select, 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 select. If you're having trouble selecting, zoom in, zoom out. Um, and keep trying. Don't select this or this. That wouldn't be right. So we're going to change that to cut. And if you remember, we cut this extrusion was 0 0.050, so that's the correct dimension. You could always say all. Just say choose all or to next would be fine also. And so I'm going to choose OK. And there we go there is the wheel. So when I look at it I'm going to be making sure that there's this step is done correctly. There's half in and half out and that the sizes are correct. So this is a great time you could change the material that it's made out of. Um, something You could go with something plastic or you could just make it really shiny and chrome it up or something like that. Alright, have fun!